Yeah, hello. Welcome back to the next release of our uh, broadcast dedicated to answering the questions that the management of Unitsky String Technologies has received throughout the year from those people who follow our projects. My name is Eugeni Petrov. I am Deputy General Director for Marketing at Unitsky String Technologies. Arsen Babayan, a representative of the Moscow office of Unitsky String Technologies, LLC. Oleg Markovich Zaretsky, Director, a representative of the Dubai office of Usecovery, as well as employees of Unitsky String Technologies, Incan. Maxim Nikolaevich Gusev, the head of the project management department, and Maxim Viktorovich Kubishkin, the head of the project work directorate, are on the air with me today. Remeter, that after our series of these releases, in which we communicate in a small circle, we plan to issue the final annual address of the general designer and CEO of Unitsky String Technologies, Inc., which will provide a summary of those works, those processes that lasted throughout the year 2023. And today we will talk on the subject that is also of interest to all those who follow the development of the project. This is the subject of why not all information is broadcast, why we do not inform the general public about all the steps we take, not about all the contracts we sign, but we speak only very selectively. We inform about some things and prefer to keep silent about others. I suggest, Oleg Markovich, that we start with you today as well. Well, first of all, there are legal issues. I mean, of course, we sign non-disclosure agreements with our potential clients. We sign them at various stages. Why, let's say, a potential buyer asks us not to disclose? There could be many reasons for this already. That is, the first reason is when the client simply does not want to disclose a potential project early on, because often it is related to financial issues, to uh, the separation of cash flows and so on, to the struggle for the budget, for budget spending. That is, everyone understands that premature information about the project will lead to the fact that various forces and often hostile forces, often competitors, will start fighting for funds, for the budget, for land, for everything. And we should be very aware of that. The second issue is why can we hide? And if, accordingly, the client asks us not to tell, we have no right to disclose this information. It is confidential. That's the first issue. The second issue is that we often ask for this information to be kept confidential. And we don't think it's necessary to disclose this information prematurely. There could be a variety of reasons, too. Firstly, there are certain kinds of detractors. Secondly, there are certain kinds of competitors. We are well aware that string transport technology has so many advantages that, as I said, competitors can just start putting spokes in the wheels. And uh, as an acquaintance of mine used to say, I don't know how I can help you, but I can hurt you very badly. Accordingly, this much information, which can be thrown through mass media, through some unscrupulous journalists, can certainly harm the project. So I very strongly recommend keeping it secret for as long as possible to prevent our rivals, opponents, competitors, ill-wishers from attacking this project informationally, financially, or in any other way. Because it's clear that string transport technology, of course, has so many advantages that you can't help but assume that we have a lot of detractors. Well, these are, I think, two of the two main reasons. And by the way, there are many examples where premature information about a project that is spread, well, often, maybe foolishly by some people, maybe by our adversaries, it has led to very serious problems. It led to the fact that, well, not far to seek, literally here, well, again, I don't want to name the country or anything else when there were just some very serious people and then they got some kind of backbiting on us and just stopped talking to us. Well, that's their choice. However, I believe that one of the reasons was that the information was leaked. Well, those are my thoughts. Can you give an example? In one of the previous releases, we said that the number of applications increased after Mr. Gadkari came to us. That is, I published the news on my channels, on Telegram, on Instagram and so on. And look, people have reacted to some news and if we publish the news, our news is watched not only by our supporters. Do you think our own competitors are watching our channels? Some cableway companies, monorail, any other technology you take. 
naturally, if we publish a project, if it is published anywhere, immediately the number of competitors and the number of commercial offers that will be received by the company that is holding the tender or anything else will increase. And do we need to participate in a much more difficult tender or deal or something else in order to increase transparency? So here we are just following the prevailing winds, to put it mildly. Thank you, uh, Maxim Nikolaevich. Uh, you touched on another important topic here, Oleg Markovich. Uh, in terms of the fact that uh, there is competition going on, you said, in the budget, uh, in the land, and so on. That is, the conclusion suggests itself, or rather even statement that in a number of cases, and very often, almost always, our competitors are not only transport companies, not only companies that offer transport solutions, but also, for example, developers or companies that are engaged in the improvement of the territory, that is, all those who in one way or another claim to have a project, an infrastructure project, and it may not necessarily be a transport project. That same money could go to another infrastructure project. Here, Arsen, I know that you have encountered this situation many times in your work. Could you comment here as someone with experience? In my opinion, there is definitely a need for openness in projects on the one hand. On the other hand, it is hard not to agree with colleagues who say that there are certainly risks that competitors will react to the fact that a project is maturing somewhere and accordingly make our task more difficult. There are also bound to be detractors who may try to ruin it somehow. Honestly, I don't think there is a right answer to this question. There is a certain point in time from which it is necessary to highlight the project give publicity to it, and there is a point before which you should not do it for many reasons, including in order not to splash the energy of the project participants on distractions, on some reactions, answers, questions, uh, in order for the project to mature. There are times that, you know, you shouldn't tell about good stuff, so the energy doesn't go away. I would also just add that there is a new trend. There are scammers who are trying to use this idea of a new technology. Well, let's say there is a rail bus, crazy ideas are advertised, who also clamber everywhere and kind of giving them food. Let's say there is a project here, there is a project there. I don't think it's quite right because they're like scavengers. They will go there and they will draw some pictures, they will organize some meetings. Oleg Markovich, imagine that you are selling not string technology, but Siemens. Yes. And how would you answer the question to cover or not to cover? And I don't think Siemens is very hoglighted, by the way. Uh, by the way, that's a good question, yes. I think they just don't think about it. And, I mean, they are struggling too. They are on the market. They have competition. There's Siemens. There's Alston. There's Hitachi. There's a lot of companies, Hyundai, that do subways, do serious transport surveys. And the competition is very tough. And I don't think Siemens is trumpeting potential projects in every corner. I think Siemens is taking such a stance that they are going into PR when they already have something in place, payment or the start of construction. But it has nothing to do with string technology. Or no, it has to do solely with trade secrets. Once you have passed the point of no return and the project has, shall we say, taken place and it will move forward, then I think we should welcome all kinds of publications on this topic. Colleagues, I want to support Arsen. Um, I liked his analogy of saving the energy of the team that is working on the project from an engineer's point of view. Um, and we've had such cases, um, excessive coverage is actually detrimental to the very team that is working on the project because there were cases when a potential project was unnecessarily covered in the press in some media environment but now the world is open, everyone has social networks, and they get to the engineers, they get to the designers who are working on the project, some strangers start asking questions. And here we know that such a project is being worked on. People get distracted, people get too emotional. So for some time to come, I think that, say, this kind of willfully under highlighting of the project is a good thing when we get to the construction and implementation stage of the project, I think it is already justified. Press coverage and so on, until this reaches the stage of specific implementation, it does not seem to bring any additional bonuses from the point of view of the well-coordinated work of the team.
Yes, thank you, colleagues. Uh, here we mentioned uh, Siemens. Well, it doesn't matter. It's the conventional Siemens. Uh, we are talking about the fact that there are many other companies that are engaged in large infrastructure projects. And indeed, at a certain stage, uh, such projects cannot do without publicity, without public discussions, if only because it affects the interests of society. That is, if a transport line should go past the house where you live, it is brought up for discussion in city councils, regional councils, and so on. But I wanted to point out that we get asked, why don't you show the contracts that you sign? Well, I can say that we, for example, tried to look specifically for contracts of our competitors, players on the market, such as the same Siemens, the same Doppelmayr. Well, we found a couple of those from a decade ago that accidentally leaked on the internet, but nothing more than that. Well, because the contract is part of the intellectual property, pardon. Somebody drafted that. We have, by the way, ready contract packages, we've put so much effort into developing them and reconciling them, everything. The last thing I want is for someone to then just copy our contracts and start working on them. Well, of course, I was actually saying the same thing, that even if the project is made public, still the details of it, the technology and marketing, uh, the sale of such a complex infrastructure project is also a technology. So the technologies themselves are still trade secret anyway, and not beyond non-disclosure agreements. Well, maybe we should also keep in mind here some external factors which can have a negative impact on the project the more we talk about it. And yet, there are some projects we are talking about. Let's talk about these projects and tell our viewers why I, some of the projects, some of our steps we're talking about. Oleg Markovic, maybe you'll start again. Uh, we signed a memorandum in Indonesia with Innovative Transport Systems that they are our partners in Indonesia so it was not a contract, not an agreement about any particular project. It was a memorandum that there is a government organization there that was organized at the Ministry of Transport to identify potentially innovative transport systems for implementation in Indonesia. Excuse me, Oleg Markovic. Do I understand correctly that in this case, uh, as in other cases, when we do give publicity to our projects, we are talking about the fact that our partners here needed this publicity to get public support? Of course, it was the PR and press and media representation that was exactly the initiative of ITES. It was the same event as the memorandum, which was signed, for example, by the Ministry of Transport of Dubai. And that's why ITS was interested in building a relationship with us. And on this basis, we get some leads from ITS just for the projects. And we work with them, by the way, very closely. And with the help of ITS, let's say a meeting was arranged with the governor of Jakarta. But again, that's not to say that it was some particular project, and it's not to say that we were interested in it. It's immediately said that we want to cover this in the press everywhere. But we weren't against it, again, because we're not talking about any particular project. About the fact that Indonesia being a potential market for us, a very good market, yes, there is nothing secret about it. But if we talk about specific projects in India, somewhere out there, in the Dominican Republic or somewhere else, I would prefer not to disclose the details. Well, in Indonesia, we still prefer not to disclose details about specific projects. At the same time, in uh, El Salvador, for example, we had the same situation exactly when the authorities who initiated the projects, who, by the way, paid Unitsky String Technologies, Inc., a certain amount of money for the work done as part of the preliminary feasibility study, they themselves were interested in making the information public. Well, that's exactly where we made advances. Yes, yes, yes. If we don't see any pitfalls, why not? Although in some cases we do not recommend that the client make the information public. Somewhere yes, somewhere no. But again, I say, there can't be some hard and fast rule, hard and fast code here. Of course, here we judge everything by the situation and try to do what is best because we all have the same goal, which is to get a targeted project and its construction. I think everyone would agree that each of our projects is unique. It is individual and so distinctly individual. And of course, somewhere we tell what we can, somewhere we prefer to keep silent for the time being. Well, naturally, when we get to the construction site, it will be impossible to hide it at a certain stage, and it is impossible to do without public discussion. Let us talk about what other difficulties there are, because we have so far talked mainly about the victories and the achievements that we have, but there are also a number of significant difficulties. I know, for example, that a number of projects for which we even signed contracts 
were suspended at a certain stage for a number of reasons. For example, I can recall a project in Ukraine where we had already started a feasibility study, where we even received the first tranche, the payment for the feasibility study, but at a certain point we had to stop all work. It has nothing to do with publicity or non-publicity here, it's just uh, force majeure. Maybe there will be some other events of force majeure, especially since everyone is talking about it now. We should realize that there is another point that, let's say, Russia and Belarus are under sanctions. We are all citizens of these countries. So to talk about commercial projects in Europe, although there is also a huge interest there, by the way, there is a huge interest from Europe and even America, but of course now we have to shift our focus on Asia and Africa, and there are certain political risks, for example, supplies from Belarus, technology from Belarus, and so on and so forth. So we have to be very careful in that regard as well, because it is an open secret that all developing countries in Africa and Asia are under enormous pressure to stop any cooperation with, let's say, Belarus and Russia. Yes, we have an Emirati company, we say we have Emirati technology, but again, I say we have to be careful about that. That is, and even here in general, it has no direct relation to the openness and closeness of information, but in fact it does. I won't name countries, I won't name personalities, but just when you talk to people at a fairly high level, there is a message that there is pressure on all fronts to limit or even stop any cooperation of African and Asian countries with Russia and Belarus. Eugenie, I will not name the country from my practice, but how can the openness of information on the project be used in a bad way? When we talk about countries where there is democracy and elections, we should understand that our projects are infrastructural. They solve a certain pain, a transport problem, or a task that the previous heads of regions were struggling with. And of course, before the elections, it is very profitable for the head of a region to announce to the public in his country that we are now signing a contract with such and such a company and will solve the transport problem. Election passes, either the candidate is defeated and our project is safely forgotten, or the promise remains a promise. So this is an example when, let's say, we are used in some of their election campaigns. This is exactly the negative side of this business in which we are players. In other words, infrastructure projects are very important for the region and for the population. Thank you, Maxim Viktorovich. Uh, a really important point, by the way, have you noticed that? And here I would like to compliment you uh, in the sense that um, in addition to the fact that our technologies, our solutions can be used as an element of an election campaign, let's say, by certain officials, but where there is competition, any political figures, they naturally come under the attack of their competitors. And often, unfortunately, when there is an attack on a politician, there is an attack on the projects that this politician promotes. And here, by disclosing the information to the public space, we risk that together with this or that person, we will be intertwined in the political election game, and the blow that will be aimed at a particular person, it will be inflicted, among other things, on our reputation. And reputation is very important for us at this stage, an important indicator. Arsene, is there anything you want to add? Well, firstly, developing the topic of sanctions pressure, which Oleg Markovich mentioned, that, tentatively speaking, the Russian and Belarusian trace, I think, prevents it from moving to a large extent to the markets, maybe not in Asian countries. There are just difficulties with settlements, something else. But European and American markets are closed for us today in our situation. In terms of our internal situation, Eugenie Olegovich, you know exactly we won't disclose the address, but in one of our southern regions, our project has reached a certain stage where it should have passed the point of no return on funding. And so it didn't happen. The project was not denied, but postponed indefinitely until the geopolitical situation changed and normal civic priorities were restored and the project had a right to life. So such force majeure factors are certainly present in our work. What would I like to point out? The risks. There are the risks uh, associated as you said in publishing, it's a bit of a similar story here, personality risks. The point is that ultimately a project, before it takes place, should go through such a range of important characters, personalities who have to say yes, yes, yes. A lot of yeses should be said for the project to get to some person or some point 
where a decision is made. Along the way, there may be people in that range who read something, didn't fully understand it, and may have had a preconceived notion, shall we say, inspired by unscrupulous publications. And the project is slowing down, requiring some clarifications, answers to questions. Well, it is either not moving as fast in its progression as we would like, or maybe, in general, there were once cases when it was canceled without explanation. I don't know. Maybe Eugene Olegovic has many more such examples. We had more than one or two examples where we knew for sure that the return on investment, operating expenditures, capital expenditures, project value, passenger traffic, and in general, virtually all the conditions, all the characteristics were really better than those of the competitors, sometimes by a serious amount in percent. But we never won in those tenders, simply because there were some other interests there. I absolutely agree with Arsene about the fact that it's not always the characteristics that we think play a major role that are really so important, like price and so on. Perhaps there are interests there, or the line of projects goes somewhere further and so on than we see. Thank you. Thank you, Maxim Nikolaevich. We see that there are a number of factors that do not speak in favor of the fact that we covered this information from what Arsene said. I would allow myself to summarize it all. In other words, by giving information to the public space, to the public field, we initiate a certain discussion. Innovations have never been welcomed by anyone. There are different kinds of social phenomena, like, for example, NIMBI, which is an English abbreviation that means, not in my backyard, that is, build anywhere, but if there is a road near me, I don't agree. And naturally, if such a discussion arises, in response to a publication that tells us that everything is good, there will be a publication that tells us that everything is bad. And this may affect, by the way, the decision making of certain local officials, that is the executors. On the other hand, if we do not put this information in the public field, we leave the possibility to influence the opinion of officials or other decision makers on the one hand, and on the other hand, putting this information in the public field in the field of discussion still does not give any results because these people, our clients, we talked about it in the first release of this series. These are special people who, after all, draw most of their information not from the media, but from their advisors, consultants, and so on. And we are working with them. We've talked about other things, a lot of things too, so I hope it's a little bit clearer to our viewers why we talk about something only point-wise, only selectively and very carefully. It is in the interests of business first and foremost, in the interests of technology, in the interests of investors. We thank you for your attention. Thank you colleagues for participating in today's discussion. Next time we will talk about our assets, about competences, about preparing the material base for the implementation of commercial projects or within the framework of the implementation of these commercial projects. We hope you'll join us. And after that, before the holidays, this year we'll be rounded off with a speech by the general designer and CEO of Unitsky String Technologies summarizing the year's work. Thank you for your attention. See you next time.